and welcome back. Yes, now today, although you're looking at my workbench with that web radio still on there, today we're actually going to be talking about tasks or multitasking in a practical sense on the ESP32, amongst other things. Indeed. Now, if you remember, I said that um, the web radio design is such that you've got to keep stuff pumped out to this little VS1053. Otherwise, the music can stop, basically. So putting that into a main loop is not the best idea because the main loop is doing, well, everything else as well. You know, whether it's um, looking to see whether you've pressed any of these buttons on here or, you know, muting or whatever it is you're doing. It's, it's doing everything in sequence. All right. No matter how fast your processor is, and believe me, the ESP32 is a fast processor. Even the single core S2 one is fast. But even so, if you're doing something else, it cannot possibly be pumping data out to the VS1053. So what I noticed was having played about with these buttons on the screen, I've got it um, connected at the moment. And in fact, I'll just demo that if I hit this um, minus button you should see if the camera doesn't automatically uh, look see it's getting dimmer and and it gets brighter again there we are look. but today we really want to talk about tasks in the esp32 um, just before we do that though let's have a quick message i want to have a quick shout out to jlc pcb manufacturers of high quality pcbs and let's not forget their special offer Going until the 25th of December 2020, that's $2 for a four-layer PCB. And it's so much easier to root stuff when you've got four layers. You can have a ground plane in the middle or a VCC plane in the middle and leave the outer two layers for tracks of your choice. Now, there's something else that uh, JLC PCB brought to my attention. If you've got more than one PCB to manufacture, don't put them in as separate orders, all the shipping costs associated with that. Do what I did here. Once you've added your first order to the JLC PCB order page, let that go through the normal process and add it to your cart. Here's one that I'm just doing as a demo. If we save this to the cart and you think, yeah, that's fine, but I've got another PCB to make and I don't want to add the extra shipping on. All you have to do on this one, go back into it. So here's the file we've just uploaded that you just saw. Instead of creating a new order and incurring extra shipping costs, click the Add New Item button up the top there, and you can add a further Gerber file, zip file, to that order, all as one big order. Here we go. See, you just add more. Let me show you one that I did earlier. So here you can see an order of mine where I've got three PCBs all attached to a single order and one shipping charge, which makes life a lot cheaper, doesn't it? Yeah funny what you can find out. Anyway, don't forget then their special order at JLC PCB, $2 for four layer PCB, only valid until December the 25th. Why not try them out now? Right, and thank you very much for JLC PCB indeed, because they're making the PCB for this possible, and that will be part of a future video as well. And hopefully we'll get rid of this rat's nest here of wires, and it's just, oh, it's out of this world, isn't it? But it is hanging together. And the other thing is, this particular version now running that you can see here was not programmed using um, platform io and it was not programmed using eclipse what was it programmed using yes the arduino ide foolishly i agreed to port the code from platform io into arduino land much against my uh, better judgment and believe me halfway through i thought why did i ever even try this let's just switch over to the code window right here we are so this is the arduino ide it's got a, a standard esp type board allocated i think i might have chosen the rover one there's a standard sort of generic esp rover and the only difference between that and the w room remember is the additional ps ram which some people have soldered directly onto the esp32 and turned it into a rover Ooh. well if you've got a steady hand and good eyesight hmm, neither of which apply to me that's a good solution but uh, i'm using a rover board in fact i'm using the tt go v 1.71 version of that uh, board and it, it's working really well and that's what the pcb is going to be designed for because after all at the end of the day i'm designing the pcb for me to use and to share with you potentially all right let's see how it goes first back to the arduino ide then so as you can see this was all uploaded uh, last night and it's all been running i can't hand on heart i can't say it all ran smoother i mean when it was built and uploaded and everything else and yes this does use ps ram but i had to hack that 
again in a different way I'm, I'm a bit cross with the Arduino IDE yeah I know again yes and because the PS RAM just I could not get it to work because the underlying ESP32 Arduino core from Espressif just would not recompile on here I made a change to one of the core CPP programs in a similar way to what I did to platform IO version and it would not pick it up it just would not pick it up no matter what so I'm well I don't know if I'm going to investigate that or not the trouble at the moment of course is if there's a new ESP32 core from Espressif as there will be of course going forward it's going to splat over the top of my hacks and indeed yours if you decide to do the same so it's not ideal by any means I might have to go onto the Espressif forum and say look we need PS RAM to be uh, usable in the circular buffer without me doing all these hacks what do you think can we do this this and this and we'll see what they say but as you know that's going to take weeks and months okay no but it looks all okay right up until I came in this morning and it was playing quite happily uh, yeah and there it is and it's been playing quite happily ever since we'll just leave it there but at least at the moment this is running now on an Arduino build tasks we're going to talk about a task now let me draw on the whiteboard exactly how this really works so why do we need a task of this uh, particular web radio when it puts the stuff out to the VS 1053 well this is your loop right now that is running on core 1 on the ESP32 now each task and this is a task in itself is single threaded it can only do one thing at a time so if it's doing something at this point here it does it and then comes back and does the next thing and comes back and so on and then it hits the end of the loop goes back to the calling routine which you don't see normally and comes back in again and starts the whole process again now this can happen thousands if not tens of thousands of times a second on a fast processor so if one of these routines here say was to play the actual music and that was connected to the VS 1053 mp3 decoder why do we need a task to do that when this is already in a task well the long and short of it is if this is also doing things like button control and I don't know potentially screen updates and indeed anything else you might want to think of these all take time so it's come down here it's played that come down here now it's looking at the buttons oh you've pressed the brightness button or the volume button yeah I'll do that oh now the title's changed I've got to update that all oh, right now I finished I'll come out down by the time it gets to this point here again on the next iteration this has run out of music to play it goes oh nothing to play glitch now the time taken to get from here back down here doing whatever it's going to do here before it gets back down into the play thing might only be a millisecond or half a millisecond or tenth of a millisecond but believe me you will hear that so what we want to do is not have this here at all we want to create another task this is our own little task running in its own little loop here and of course we will have to say do forever because the task itself otherwise will start here run to here and stop that'll be the end of it, it doesn't run again nothing's going to tell this to run again so we say do forever and move whatever was in here over to here so we say in here play and that's it that's all this task is doing it's not looking at buttons on the screen it's not trying to update the titles it's it's totally independent okay and this one is running literally in parallel so I think that gives you an idea of why we need to have an independent task that does its thing all by itself and is not subject to the vagaries of what's happening in the loop right the loop can do its own thing fine but your task that you need to run that critical process and I do consider this a critical process putting stuff across the wire to the VS 1053 to ensure that seamless uh, stream of music because your ears are very sensitive to even the tiniest glitch all right now we did talk about tasks on the ESP32 before uh, and it in fact was if you look in the PDF that I always put a link to in my uh, well github and the video description down there it's a PDF that um, Mike does for me every single week thank you Mike by the way I know we have communication but I mean it's I find it an absolute godsend to search my own videos to find out where I did stuff uh, in fact for this very reason so what we have here is um, I said go and find me ESP32 and in fact this one here dual core programming so number 149 was one of them and then we said 151 how to pass values between 
task which we're not doing here that's you know using uh, cues and semaphores it's a little bit more in depth but certainly the, how to create a task that one there is basically what we're doing today but this time it's actually doing something for real if you like rather than just I don't know I don't know what I did in that video anymore was it flashing an LED probably was wasn't it um, so let's have a look it's very very simple anybody can do this we'll have a look right now now I'm going to be using the Arduino IDE to show you this because there's something you need to take note of you notice that the main sketch the INO file ENO file um, is the one highlighted in the tab up there but you can see these other tabs just about I don't think the color scheme is very good here blue on blue but anyway these are all the what I call helper files they're in H header files and uh, one of them is the task helper file and this is where we create the task that is invoked from the setup of the main system here so in the setup we say I want you to execute this task please so if we look at the task helper.h, which is in the same folder as your sketch, the Eno file, as are all these other helpers, I might add, Wi-Fi helper, TFT helper, because they're just basically joined joined on to this Eno file, but they're too big. They I try to follow the single responsibility principle, which is basically say this bit of code does this, and that bit of code does that. And if you join them all together, hello, who's ringing? And if you join all these bits of code together in one big Eno file, you can't see the wood for the trees and you're scrolling up and down thinking, where do I put this? And of course, the Arduino IDE is not very friendly when it comes to programming anything larger than the Blink sketch, really. When I ported this over, it was so awful because I, I don't use the Arduino IDE to program anymore. I really don't. I occasionally put stuff in there for the purpose of these videos to prove they run on the Arduino IDE, but that's about it. But whichever platform you use you shouldn't be putting all your code into one file it just makes it unwieldy you can't tell what's what you get in a total mess so anyway I've split it up here okay so the the task helper is all in this file and it's included in the head of the main one let's have a look what we need to do these are the forward declarations that means functions that we're going to be using but are probably elsewhere so the compiler would normally get upset with that. Arduino lets you get away with it, but it's bad practice. Right, so the first thing we do is create a handle, uh, this task handle here, to, well, a name of your choice. Now I've called it Play Music Task Handle, because my task is called Play Music Task. So the handle for that makes it obvious that's what I'm going to call it. Okay, and here is the task itself. Play music task and it has to take a parameter of void the type of void star parameter which means any type of parameters go in there it doesn't have to be an int or a string or u int or anything it what it means is is it's an undefined type of parameter you can put anything in there it's just the way tasks are set up so this bit of code has been taken on mass from the original code so I've said okay the bit of code that I did originally in the loop to play the music I'm now going to put in here and what I'll put right at the top though I've added in this to say I want you to do this forever I don't want you to do this task once and then exit and that's it I mean, that's not going to that's going to give us one milliseconds worth of music thereabouts okay so we want this to whiz round around 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 and around forever as fast as it can do it yeah because that means the buffers always going to be red and stuffed down the wire to the VS 1053 great now the task setup is pretty simple we say x task create pinned to core which means we want it to run on the core that we're telling it which is in our case core one do not pin things to core zero core zero is where Wi-Fi is running Bluetooth is running and goodness what knows what else is running on core zero you do not really want to interfere with that so we're saying uh, this is the the function that I want you to run as we define that play music task well up here we said play music task that's the name of the function we're going to run uh, we give it a name although frankly I've never had cause to use the name it's only when you display what task is running I think that will become useful the stack size well as you can see I've chosen 1700 why did I choose that well I'll tell you how in a second uh, input parameters well we've got no parameters for this one so there's nothing the priority of the task must be one 
not zero. Zero means idle. When everything is not doing anything, then you can run this. Well, I, I said, go on then, try it. Go and try running that on zero and see how well it doesn't work. Yeah, it's got to be one. Okay, you can put it as two, but I wouldn't. Keep things at the same level as normal user tasks are running all at one. Um, that's the handle. So if you ever want to talk to this task to say, tell this task to stop or restart or do something, that's what you'd have to use the handle. And uh, the core, this is the pinned to core bit. Which core do we want to run on? You at the back? Yes, core one, that's correct. All right, and that's it, that's the end. There is, there is no more code after that. Now, beware, the instant you do this, the minute that is actually executed, in my case from the startup, it starts running instantly, right? There's no set it up and now run it. No, no, it's set up and run all in one go. So the instant this is running, if we go back to the actual task itself, it's going to go to the, the buffer and go, can I play music from the buffer? And of course, the default value is, no, you can't. You just hang on a bit. I haven't even put anything in the buffer yet because this is going to run in, you know, a nanosecond, isn't it? Given the speed of the core of the ESP32. So eventually, um, the can play music from buffer is going to be set by another bit of code in the main loop to say, OK, the buffer's full enough now. I'll set that flag. This reads that flag and it starts playing the music. All right, brilliant. I'm thinking we really need two tasks, don't we? Going back to the whiteboard, we have one task that dumps all the data to here from the circular buffer. But what about the reading from the internet stream and putting it into the circular buffer in the first place? I think that could probably be in a separate task. So basically a little task does all the dumping out to here, but a separate task at the same priority says, go and get me data from the internet stream and stuff it in the buffer if there's room. So we have two tasks all running independently and then the main loop to do things like all this button handling and screen updating with titles and stuff like that. Yeah. Oh, by the way, that, that's a mute symbol, that is. If I hit that, there we are, muted now. Look at that. Cool. So there's still things we can explore with this particular application, and certainly I want to, and I've even got a book to do it, all about ESP32 multitasking and the free RTOS and all this kind of stuff. So that will form a video or two in the future. Okay, there's, there's something else I need to tell you as well. Now, remember last week I said there was noise, in fact, it was a couple of weeks ago now, so there's noise on the line because of the ground loop situation where the output from here uh, was being fed into my PC, which is connected to the amplifier, and we had a ground here and a ground on the USB side here, and possibly the power as well, and it was all, you know, one big circular thing. And a couple of you said it's not just the ground loop, potentially. Is that actually at ground? The ground on here, or the central connection, is that really at ground as well or not? And uh, I said, well, I've got a couple of these little mini audio transformers. Oh, there's the picture. Look, a couple of those little miniature ones. I thought, oh, do I really have to put those on the PCB? They're so fiddly. And then I just disconnected the ground. So I had left and right out, connected that to my PC, and it all seemed to work okay. Very good quality, except, oh, you know, just that hint of noise at the back, and it wasn't quite right. So I thought, right, I don't want to use those transformers. I know they're cheap. They were probably two or three quid or something, whatever it was, from eBay. How do I know that an audio isolating transformer is going to work anyway? So I looked at uh, Amazon, and I bought this, and I thought, well, I'm going, to, I'm going to get this and just try it out. So this is a, an audio isolating transformer from Upside Down Orky. You see that? Now, this was not cheap. It was, I think, about 9.99 British pounds. Uh, and you put basically the output. So the output from here, this one here is in one side. And this side, it's all, all 3.5 millimeter jacks, just goes into the computer or audio amplifier, whatever it is you've got. Now, hand on heart, I can say that this is absolutely 100% the answer. And I'm thinking, I'm going to keep this instead of trying to put transformers and any kind of PCB there. Because they're just so fiddly and I'm not convinced they're going to work anyway. Whereas this most definitely does work. Now, I did say I was going to show you about the heap memory on that task. 
So let's have a quick, very quick look at that. So in the task helper.h file, the helper file, we have this, this comment here. Um, every minute we say, go and get me uh, the stack high watermark. So a bit like they expressive explain it like when you get a river and you get the high watermark coming up and then the river drops back down again, but you can see where the high watermark was. So what this gives you effectively is the free memory of the stack that you gave it. So here I'm saying free stack. Um, this is the remaining stack. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah, it is a little bit confusing. People think it's the memory you use, but it's not. It's the free memory. And over on the um, call term window, you'll see that I'm printing it out once every minute. Now it starts because I give it, uh, I originally gave it 10,000 just as something to give it so it wouldn't crash. All right. And I said, how much have I got free? And it says you've got 9,400 free or something ridiculous or 8,400 free. So I go, OK, let's bring it down to 2,000. OK, so in the task itself, when we create the task here, I kept changing that, you know, from 10,000 down to 2,000, letting it display um, over here how much it got left and expressive say anything between two and 400 is OK. And uh, so I thought, OK, well, I can still bring it down a little bit further. No point in squandering the memory just because we have a lot of it here. And eventually 1700 seems to work well. However, the free memory, given that it's running the same task thousands of times a second, the free memory changes over time. And I've got a little snapshot of that to show you. Right. So this is um, the snapshot of a few days back when I was doing all this task stuff. And um, this is where it's rebooting and showing me how much PS RAM and heap and all that I've got. And I've said, right, the free stack as the task started was 1044 bytes left, right? That's the free stack. Then it started the setup routine and all the rest of it. And it goes, oh, now your free stacks dropped to 324. Still fine and well within the realms of what we, we want, right? It's probably actually started to read the buffer at this point and play the stuff. And then after a while, it goes, no, your free stack's now down to 132. So it's dropped quite a bit. No particular reason. Nothing's gone wrong. It's just dropped. And then it stays at 132 for a long, long time. And then suddenly says, oh, look, you're now at 100, 100 bytes free stack, all within, I don't know, half an hour or something. And then the next day, though, I let this run from that time, so 1556 on one day, right until the next day, and it says you're still on that 100 bytes free memory in that task all right imagine the task like a little miniature tiny microcomputer and it's just running that one task the memory it's using it doesn't seem to expand it just shrinks and contracts but it doesn't go beyond that it leaves it um, at 100. i think hmm i wonder why what what have i got a memory leak or has espressif got a memory leak it's something to do with the circular buffer or is there something wrong with my code i haven't quite done something right and it's leaking memory creating variables on and on am i using the string variable with a capital s that's a bad thing to do because that does fragment heap memory and use it and doesn't clean up after itself no is the answer i'm not not in this bit anyway so while that why why that free stack memory reduces down to a minimum and then sits there forever i've no idea so when you create your tasks, first of all, create it with a big thing first, right? You know, 5,000, 10,000, just to see what you get. And then reduce it a little bit, but then let it run for a long, long time, all day if necessary, just to see how far it goes down to before you decide upon the final value. Now, 100 bytes, it's a little bit low, to be quite honest. So I might increase the stack value for that task to 2,000, just to give it a bit of headroom, given that we've got it. It's only another 300 bytes, isn't it? And it'd be interesting then to see if it still reduces or not. One final thing on here I can show you, finally enough, as we're here. When this reads the streaming data and reads the metadata every so often, let me find where it says uh, metadata. There we are. Look, metadata block, 96 bytes. Remember that the value coming down is multiplied by 4. And the metadata here is this entire line here. So it says stream data, blah, 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 including the stream URL and everything else. And I extract the, the track title, yes? Oh, but look what happened here. Look, waiting for metadata, and it's found it here. And it was huge. Um, I seem to have deleted the, um, the actual value. But it's something like 1,500 bytes, which is 
ridiculous amount. But you see all this stuff, I thought it had corrupted it, and all this was corruption. No, it wasn't. And the clue was here, where it says insertion type, pre-roll. Because here I switched to this particular radio station, I don't know which one it was, it might have been Greatest Hits, and I immediately got an advert, even though I know at the time it was in the middle of playing a song. But I switched to it, I immediately got an advert, and then it switched to playing joining the mainstream. And that, I think, this AdWiz content, all this, is a an MP3 or something that's been um, compressed and it will play first. Clever stuff, eh? Very clever. Embedded adverts as part of your metadata. Who would have thought? Just a nice to know, I think. Okay, that's it for this week. I've realised there's, there's far too much, and we could talk about this for hours and hours, but the task thing I think was important to talk about. The buttons, I'll show you the code for that, um, some other time, but it's it's fairly straightforward. It's all part of that TFT, E S P I T F T library. Well, it's from Bodmer, but it's been forked and upgraded a little bit, the version I'm using. Um, it's not difficult, but you know, how to do these images and all that probably needs a little bit of explanation. And we'll talk about that some other time. And when I get the PCBs through for any of this, you'll be the first to know. Until then, thanks for watching. I look forward to your comments below. See you in the next video. I hope you're finding these videos useful and interesting. There are plenty more videos to choose and a couple are shown below. And if you'd like to subscribe to this channel, just click on my picture below and enjoy the rest of the videos. Thanks for watching.